speaker is Chris Maurice, who is the founder of Yellow Card. And he's going to talk to us about how Yellow Card is changing the Bitcoin and stablecoin environment in Africa. Let's give Chris a warm round of applause. Sick. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Chris, CEO of Yellow Card, and uh, you know I think uh, my my friend here yelled out that uh, Africa is the future of Bitcoin, but I'm I like to live in the present. And so I want to talk about why Africa is actually the present of Bitcoin. Africa is the right now of Bitcoin as opposed to the future. Everybody talks about Bitcoin as this future technology, as this thing that's coming. But the reality is, is that it's happening right now and it's happening across the continent. And, and I want to talk about some of the stuff that, that crypto is actually being used for. And, uh, you know, I, I think everybody that's here has already heard about the problem seven times. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna belabor on the problem, right? But uh, you know, look, let's let's uh, let's be honest. The currencies across the continent don't work. There's a lot of inflation, and there's not a lot of trade within the African continent. African intra-African trade is the lowest of any continent in the world. It's four times smaller than Europe. It's six times smaller than Asia. And you have the highest fees in the world for moving money around, right? If you're moving money into the continent, you're paying as much as 9%. And God forbid you need to move money around the continent. You might as well drive the cash. And so I, I want to I talk about how stable coins are actively solving those problems for businesses across the continent. And I also want to be realistic about what's actually happening on the continent. Because again, I, I think you know it's, it's easy with... Uh, a group like this to get very idealistic and the the reality is is that people aren't using Bitcoin on the continent people are using stable coins that's what's actually happening I know this is the Africa Bitcoin conference but again I think we should be realistic about about what's going on stable coins are happening right now Bitcoin not getting a not getting a ton of love on the continent uh, but USDC USDT and and other stable coins are and, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer that all roads lead to Bitcoin. I think that if you get people into this ecosystem and you get people into this space, then they will end up in something like Bitcoin. They will end up in a decentralized currency. They will end up in the, the you know, the right place at the end of the day. But right now, people don't want another volatile asset. They want stability. And that's the real problem that people are facing every day is instability, facing inflation, right? And so, uh, you know, this is something that I love to, to talk about is that as of, as of today, every business on the continent is either using stable coins to power the cross-border aspects of their business or they're lying about it. Those are the two options right now on the continent. And there are a lot of people that lie about it for a number of reasons, for regulatory reasons, because they don't want to you know, piss off a bank, they don't want to piss off a regulator. But everybody is using stable coins or lying about it because there's just not another way to be able to move large amounts of money constantly across borders on the continent. And you know, this, is, this is what it's led to, right? And so when, when I say everybody, I mean everybody, banks, fintechs, multinational businesses, if you're doing imports, exports, manufacturing, anything like that, you're using stable coins or you're using somebody that uses stable coins to be able to move that money. And, uh, you know, again, I think, uh, you know, banks and, and financial institutions and uh, sort of the, you know, the legacy traditional finance sector likes to talk down on stable coins, they like to talk down on Bitcoin, especially on the continent. But I can, I can tell you from personal experience that they are using it. Banks on the African continent are using stable coins to be able to move money across borders. That's happening today, even though they tell you that they're not, even though they tell the regulators that they're not. And, and so I, I wanted to slightly introduce Yellow Card and, and what we do and, and how we help businesses and banks and financial institutions do this. Uh, so for anybody that's not familiar with us, we're the largest and only licensed stablecoin on and off ramp on the continent. We're in 20 countries, all in Africa. Rest of the world is boring, so we like to keep it here. Uh, we do about $2 billion in transactions, and we serve over 20,000 businesses of all shapes and sizes. 
Uh, and we do that with payment rails across the continent. We do the hard work of actually integrating to banks, to mobile money providers, to cash on and off ramps across Africa. And we then give that to businesses. So if you are a business in any of these highlighted countries, then you, through Yellow Card, you're able to access banking rails, you're able to access mobile money rails to be able to move money in and out of the continent. Um, we do that through an API, right? So if you're a business, you tie into the API, it makes it super simple, move money in, move money out. It's great, highly recommended. Uh, and now we have a widget as well, right? So if you are a business that does not normally do KYC, you're not normally on the compliance side of the transaction, then we handle that entire flow for you. You go, you uh, integrate the widget, it, it you know, pops up in an iframe just like any other, any other pop-up or, uh, or widget and the customer is able to go through the entire experience on there. They're able to do KYC, they're able to load money off-ramp, on-ramp, whatever they need, and then just have your, have your wallet loaded. We handle the entire experience. You enter the continent without actually having to do the work of entering the continent. You don't have to have a bank account in Africa. You don't have to have an entity in Africa. We take care of the licensing, the regulation, the banking, all of that. Uh, I had a demo, but uh, after watching the last two days of presentations, I, uh, I, I believe in God, and I know that that's just not going to be possible. Um, and so <laughs> I'll just talk about it. I'll just talk through it instead of, uh, instead of trying to play a video. Uh, like I said, with the, with the widget, right, you integrate this into any website, any browser, wallet, decentralized, centralized, doesn't matter. It pops up. It's one line of code. You're just redirecting people to a URL. It pops up. The customer is able to say, I want to buy 1,000 USDC. I have Naira. I have CD. I have Shilling. I have whatever I have. You go through the KYC process, and then, boom, it's in your wallet. It's, it's right there for you, for the user. You are in commission. You get to enter the African continent without having to do the hard work of actually trying to set up here, right? The other thing that we do is we do commercial trading and we do treasury management. And again, this is why I said I can speak from experience that banks across Africa right now are using stable coins to actually move money in and out of the continents because we're the ones that sell it to them. And so we work with banks, we work with financial institutions, any multinational company, if you need to move money from point A to point B on the continent, there's, there's again, only really one way to do that, and that's through stable coins. So manufacturers, importers, fintechs, anything like that, we serve about 20,000 businesses, all shapes and sizes, anything you can imagine. We serve pharmaceutical companies that need to import drugs from India to keep people healthy. We serve one of the largest food producers on the continent that needs to import raw materials from Europe to feed the country. And yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, the sad reality is, as, as most people in this room know, that, uh, you know, the alternative is you go to a bank, you fill out a bunch of forms, you pray to God, and uh, you hope for the best. And most of the time, they're either going to reject that dollar transfer, or they're not going to give you nearly as many dollars as you actually need to be able to make that transaction. Uh, we work with, like I said, a number of companies. So one of those is PayPal, right? So anybody now with Venmo, you're able to send money easily to the African continent. We had a video of this too, but uh, you know, again, I think that's, uh, that's out the window. Same with Coinbase, right? Anybody, anybody that has a Coinbase account, you can send money completely free from Coinbase, completely free from Venmo to Yellow Card, to the African continent, have that money cashed out in Africa, right? We did as well, we did the announcement yesterday with TBD, uh, where we're working on TBDEX. If you're integrating with TBDEX, you're using the TBDEX language and protocol, you're able to access all 20 countries, the on and off ramps uh, across the continent. This is just a you know, sample size of some of the companies that we work with. Uh, Western Union, we have cash on and off ramps through Western Union, which again, accessible through the API, all of that. And so, I, you know, I think, again, when people think about crypto on the continent, instead of thinking about it as the future of Africa, people should be realistic that it's the right now, it's the present, it's happening, and it's here to stay. And so for anybody that wants to do business on the continent and wants to be able to cross borders, that wants to be able to access the rest of the continent, because, you know, look, I think uh, a lot of people, especially, you know, especially foreigners coming in, see the continent as a couple of countries, right? They see Nigeria, they see South Africa, they, they see a couple of countries. 
Africa is, Africa is a beautiful and diverse place, man. It's, uh, you know, if you want to enter the entire continent and you want to do business across the entire continent, you need to be using stable coins and you need to learn how to use stable coins today. And so that's, that's a lot of the work that we're doing. Uh, come find me, happy to talk. But uh, yeah, stable coins are the right now. All roads lead to Bitcoin, but stable coins happening today, happening actively everywhere on the continent. Thank you very much for your speech. Uh, my name is Nana Batels. I'm from Ghana. And I wanted to ask you, uh, with your uh, app, uh, Yellow Card, do you have a maximum uh, transfer that you can do or just any amount? Because I know there might be some restrictions in terms of how much you can send across in that time. Oh, my brother, you look like a big guy. Bring as much as you can and let's see. Let's test the limits. It's, uh, no, I, I, you know, I think, the, again, the beauty of this industry, the beauty, the beauty of stablecoin and, and bitcoins is that you're only limited by what you're able to access from a liquidity standpoint, right? And so, I mean, we do, like I said, we serve banks, we serve multinationals, we also serve, you know, guys that sell shoes on the side of the road. So all shapes and sizes of businesses, all types of transaction sizes, I, you know, a couple million dollars all the way down to a couple thousand dollars. So my name is Michael Ansar, and I'm living in Accra. And my question is really um, concerning stable coins. Um, so there's a lot of misconceptions around stable coins, particularly concerning the companies that issue stable coins. And um, if, so like in the cryptocurrency space, like um, if like a company is said to have like um, less reserves, than they actually report. Like you have um, incidents where stable coins depeg. So um, I'm just curious about like how you are like addressing this concern because like that's like one of the biggest concerns surrounding stable coins. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I think uh, you know, look, all roads lead to Bitcoin here uh, because one Bitcoin is always one Bitcoin, so it can never depeg. Uh, and that is, that is a beautiful and, and powerful thing. I'm also realistic that most people don't like the volatility right now, right? And so I think, uh, you know, when it comes to stablecoin issuers, we're not trying to be, uh, how do you say, we're not trying to be the, the judge of moral character here, right? So I think it's up to people to make their own determination who the best stablecoin issuers are. We offer USDT, USDC, PYUSD, Celo Dollar, and, and a couple of others. And we're constantly looking for more. And so we want to make sure that people have options and, and you know, we believe that people can make informed decisions on their own. My name is Carlos from Ghana. Uh, actually want to know, uh, have a personal question to Yellow Card because I do put my money over there. Um, one thing, I want to know the strategic plans in five years coming. What is the strategic plans in terms of making payment? Because we live in a continent where I can transact with someone on the same network, but if I want to purchase a product to, let's say, Melcom, if I go to Melcom and I told them I use Bitcoin, they're not going to accept it, right? I have to go in and cash in cash. So what are the strategic approach you guys are using so that when we go to any product or any shopping mall, we ca they can accept Bitcoin? So that is the first question. The second question is, uh, I'm trying to build an app that uh, focus on payment sections. What are the plans? How can my company partner with Flutterways to, in to integrate Bitcoin in our services? So these are the two questions. Sure, yeah, on the second one, you can come talk to me. I'm happy to talk to you. Uh, I think in terms, of, in terms of crypto being accepted for payments, I think this is, a, this is an interesting one, right? I think for international payments, uh, it's, it's the best way to be able to do that, right? There are on and off ramps that we provide or that others provide around the world where you'd be able to access that. In terms of local payments, frankly, I don't think it's a good use case. I think that it's really oversold and nobody actually wants it. Right? Why would I want to pay with Bitcoin if I'm buying a latte down the street in Accra when I have mobile money? Right? It's much easier. I would rather enable people to be able to access Momo, to be able to access cash on the streets, right? than, than be able to pay in Bitcoin when Bitcoin is what they should be saving. Right? They should be spending CD saving Bitcoin. Right? So I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of the, the local payment use case, but I think the international payment use case is very powerful. 
Um, my name is Kate, and I'm, I'm one of the active uh, peer to peer traders in my country, Kenya. Now, I'm, I used to trade with Yellow Card some, some months ago, I think uh, that was last year. But we got some challenges because we could not be able to get our transactions done on time. We could deposit the money and it would take like two, three days. We've not received our USDT. So I want to know, uh, is Yerukat still available in Kenya? That's one. The reason why I'm asking this is because we had other platforms that we were trading with which was uh, Paxful, which is actually late now, is no longer working. We only rely on Binance. And sometimes it usually has its own challenges. So I don't know if you guys still have some plans to make Yerocard in Kenya a little bit more effective and be able to help us traders to be able to uh, use the platform and be able to do our business without a lot of those challenges that you used to meet. Yeah, sorry, which country? Kenya? Yeah, Kenya. Yeah, so with, with Kenya, um, obviously with, with bank transfer, as you know, Kenyan banks are known for a lot of things. Efficiency is not one of them. Uh, and so bank transfer it takes two, three days in Kenya, unfortunately, right? But now, fortunately, we have full integration with M-Pesa, and, and that, is, that is available. So that was not available at the beginning of the year, but full integration with M-Pesa is available now in Kenya. And so transactions are flowing in seconds as opposed to taking days through the banking system. Okay, thank you very much. Let's give Chris another round of applause. Thank you.